Evening Frankie, evening Jack, evening Luke. I'm just going to try and finish chapter four quickly um, and then we can move on with the story. So I'm going to start from where we left off. Right. Thank you, said the dog. You're welcome, said Coraline. Miss Forcible and Miss Spink were doing some acting. Miss Forcible was sitting on the stepladder and Miss Spink was standing at the bottom. What's in the name? asked Miss Forcible. That witch we could call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Have you got any more chocolates? said the dog. Coraline gave the dog another chocolate. I not know how to tell thee who I am, said Miss Spink to Miss Forcible. This bit finishes soon, whispered the dog. Then they'll start folk dancing. How long does it go on for? asked Caroline. The theatre? All the time, said the dog. Forever and always. Here, said Coraline. Keep the chocolates. Thank you, said the dog. Coraline stood up. See you soon, said the dog. Bye, said Coraline, as she walked out of the theatre and back into the garden. She had to blink her eyes at the daylight. Her other parents were waiting for her in the garden, standing side by side. They were smiling. Did you have a nice time? asked her other mother. It was interesting, said Coraline. The three of them walked back to Coraline's other house together. Coraline's other mother stroked Coraline's hair with her long white fingers. Coraline shook her head. Don't do that, said Coraline. Her other mother took her hand away. So, said her other father, do you like it here? I suppose, said Coraline. It's much more interesting than than at home. Then they went inside. I'm glad you like it, said Coraline's other mother, because we'd like to think that this is your home. You can stay here forever and always if you want to. Hmm, Coraline said. She put her hands in her pockets and thought about it. Her fingertips touched the stone that Mrs. Spink and Miss Forcible had given her the day before. The stone with the hole in it. If you want to stay, said her other father, there's only one little thing we will have you to do, so you can stay here forever and always. They went into the kitchen. On a china plate on the kitchen table were a spool of black cotton and a long silver needle and besides them two large black buttons. Oh, I don't think so, said Coraline. Oh, but we want you to, said her other mother. We want you to stay, and it's just a little thing. It won't hurt, said her other father. Coraline knew that when grown-ups told something wouldn't hurt, it almost always did. She shook her head. Her other mother smiled brightly, and in the, the hair of her head drifted like plants under the sea. We only want what's best for you, she said. She put her hand on Coraline's shoulder. Coraline backed away. I'm going now, said Coraline. She put her hands back to, in her pocket. She f her fingers closed around the stone with the hole in it. Her other mother's hand scuttled off Car Coraline's shoulder like a frightened spider. If that's what you want, she said. Yes, said Coraline. Well... We'll see you soon, though, said her other father, when you come back. Hmm, said Coraline. And then, when we're all together as one big happy family, said her other mother, forever and always. Coraline backed away. She turned and hurried into the drawing room and pulled open the door in the corner. There was no brick wall there, just darkness. A night black underground darkness that seemed as if things in it might be moving. Coraline hesitated. She turned back. Her other mother and her other father were walking towards her, holding hands. They were looking at her with their black button eyes. Or at least she thought they were looking at her. She couldn't be sure. Her other mother reached out her free hand and beckoned gently with one white finger. Her pale lips moved. Come back soon, although she said nothing aloud. Coraline took a deep breath and stepped into the darkness 
where strange voices whispered and distant winds howled. She became certain there was something in the dark behind her, something very old and very slow. Her heartbeat was so hard and so loudly, she was scared. It would burst out of her chest. She closed her eyes against the dark. Eventually she bumped into something that opened her eyes startled. She had bumped into an armchair in her drawing room. The open doorway behind her was now blocked by rough red bricks. She was home. That's it there, guys. Thanks very much. See you soon. Love ya.